Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, we're going to do this wonderful, uh, iconic scene of Gloucester Harbor. It's a great scene in front of the uh, Cape Horn Ice Factory. So uh, take your time. It's very, very simple. You know, keep in mind that, uh, you know, a loose, a loose drawing makes loose painting. If you, if you draw every little detail, you know, you're going to want to stay in, in those lines as you paint, which is not good. So you want to keep it nice and loose. Make sure that boat is big enough you know that's why I start with the circles you know you all, you know when I draw I usually start holding my pencil very loosely at the end and draw circles which represent the size of the shapes that I'm doing in this case that that uh, that boat which, is, which sort of dominates the painting in front of the iconic Cape Pond Ice Company that was in the movie of uh, The Perfect Storm. And this, this boat is very similar to the uh, boat that was in The Perfect Storm. It's a lobster, it's a, a swordfish boat. Anyway, uh, so take your time, draw what you need, you know, and, and I, re you know, I recommend to all my students Draw freehand first, you know, and then if you really uh, want to check your lines, just get a straight edge then and check check your, your lines, you know. All right, I'm going to start painting here. You can see I wet the paper first. I wet the whole paper, and now I'm coming down with a light wash of uh, ultramarine blue and a little bit of raw sienna, which makes it grayish. I intensified that color by using less water here. So it's the same color as ultramarine with uh, raw sienna. <clears throat> Gives you a nice gray tone. And that's the back trees and the back of the, um, the land, which is really rocky neck in Gloucester. Okay, so I painted around the boat. Now I'm putting in the shapes of the buildings, uh, same colors. You can see just painting that whole uh, that whole shape of the uh, paint factory and those other buildings. I'm leaving the rooftops light, uh, showing the reflection of the sky and this, what light there is on top of those uh, on top of those buildings. Okay, just continually painting these. I just want to show you the shadow. Uh, these being, everything's backlit here, as you can see, which is which is nice. I like I like backlit. It gives you beautiful tones, reflections, and big shapes. You know, really nice. Well, that piece of light I'm leaving there is the top of the the wharf. This is the commercial wharf there. All kinds of business going on buying and selling fish, boat after boat coming in, local boats selling to the local, local distributors. It's a great place. Gloucester is wonderful. Been here about close to 30 years now, painting in the area. Wonderful area, great light. So much to paint. All right, there's the boat. Again, putting in the shapes, leaving the pieces of light there on the, on the deck of the boat. I added just a little bit of cadmium red to that same mix of, of the gray. The gray is the ultramarine in raw sienna. And I added just a touch of red to it. I don't want the red jumping off the page here. I just want to give a tone to that red building. And then I added some cobalt blue teal to the same mix to the red and the red that's why it looks so gray but you can see the uh, suggestions of the cobalt blue teal which gives it a nice variety okay so those are the buildings in the back and then this is the dark underneath this wharf underneath this wharf is uh, very dark this is ultramarine and quinciana gives you a beautiful dark. I would keep it on the warm side. You don't want it to be real black. So I noticed this long shape. I wanted to throw in a uh, dory, a, a boat, 
in front of the dark just to break up that big black shape. Uh, you can see I penciled it in there. It's not in the photo, but it does, if you know, if you have a this size paper, you might need something to break up that shape. So I put a boat in there and I'll, I'll work with that. Using that dark color to just put a little shadow on the base of the buildings. And I noticed there's a, another fishing boat uh, behind that wharf. So just took a towel and wiped that shape out using that dark color underneath the eaves of the buildings to create that shadow. Okay, and then there's a little, a little bit of a lip on top of the paint factory that I like to put into to separate it from the sky shape. So just a little bit. All right, uh, this is raw sienna underneath the uh, roof of the cab there on the boat using that black color of ultramarine and quinciana to put in the windows. It's really good to have a, a flat brush here. I only have this one. No, I have two. This one is a three-quarter inch and, and you can just work with it. You know, you can make it down to like a quarter inch if you want to by you know, squeezing the edges. I'll make it wider. But it's wonderful to have if you have paintings with a lot of windows. All right, so you get the curve of the boat here. And we'll let that set a little bit before we put the shadow in. You can see how dark that is. So I'm using a little bit of the Quincy in there underneath, underneath the uh, windows. It's just dripping rust. So I'll take a, take a towel here and just Right, a little bit of shadow. This is just ultramarine blue. Very, it's all very wet, so that's going to run down into the window. So now I'm taking a towel, just wiping the bottom of the windows where I put that uh, quinciana. All right, so the, the boat itself is this it starts out very dark. It's a black boat, but so ultramarine and quinciana to put a black stripe down the right down the center of the bow and then on the sides. I really charged it with cobalt blue to show that the sides of the boat are getting a lot of light and that gives you a nice, creates a nice form to your boat. And this, uh, this last uh, stroke of the brush there is almost pure water. Okay, so I'm going down now. A little bit of the bl uh, blue color, a dark blue color. And what I'm doing here is just painting in the shape of my wave the shape of the reflection, I mean, I'm sorry. And I'm letting that come down and then I will feed in any color that I feel I need. Almost forgot I had that boat there. <laughs> it's so easy to forget those things. All right, nice and loose, keep this nice and loose and not looking for any, again, I'm painting the shape, I'm not looking too much for the value yet. Just want to get it flowing. You get a nice, a nice flowing feeling to this water moving. Nice and loose at the bottom here. A lot of water. I added a lot of water to, just to get the end of that. It gets much lighter, obviously, as it gets away from. You can add a little blue to it if you want, but you really don't need it. All right, so very dark again. I'm putting that black back into the center of that, the bow of the boat. It's reflecting that and that'll all merge nicely with the water. Just let it all come down. All right, kill that white on the reflection. All right, we'll put in the mass of the boat. Take your time. Nice straight lines. A little bit of a tilt to these. Uh, to these. This is the gear that these are actually uh, Levelers, they they hang, they go down and, and they have anchors at the end of them when the ship is out in the sea, and it helps the boat from keeping steady. All kinds of equipment on these boats, which is wonderful. They're just 
you can't you can't put <laughs> you can't put enough stuff on them. They just everything you add is just uh, you know you know it's people don't understand how rugged it is. You know for these fishermen, boy, they get out there and that is uh, it can be really treacherous and between the winds and the rain and the waves, you know, you get these enormous waves rocking these boats and, you know, you really need powerful stuff on top there. So, you gotta make sure that they're strong enough. All right, more shadow underneath. All right, I'm gonna pop in some windows and doors and the and these buildings that I know they're not, you can't see them in the photo, but it helps to add some, I think, to uh, just to develop the character of the building. And these are the windows on the fishing boat behind the dock. There's a fishing, uh, another fishing boat that's docked behind that wharf. So. You can see how much fun it makes to pop those little little windows and doors in. All right, I'm adding a, a water line on this boat, just a little red to make it um, a little more interesting, and I'll darken it down. I don't I don't want it too red, calling too much attention, so I'll, I'll bring it down in value. There's another boat in the back here that we can't see, but we can see the rigging which uh, I'll, add in, I'll add in here. It's so much fun. These, these, these paintings are just wonderful, you know, when you're down on the docks painting these things, they're just... All right, I'm adding some uh, utilities up on top of the building just to break up that long line of the building. So these can be, you know, air conditioners, or ventilations. And, so you can see this, I'm putting a stripe of this, changing the value of the building on the right side, so it gives you the changes the form. It makes you think the building is turning there a little bit. All right, this is just clear water. All that dark color underneath the wharf is dry, so you can see I lifted out some pilings, a suggestion of pilings there. Just clear water. Tap it first to get rid of the bubbles, and then wipe it, and you'll get some nice. Uh, and then some of those pilings will go up above the dock, so you'll see them, I mean the wharf, so you'll see the tops of them reaching above the wharf. And they're usually different lengths, you know, some of them. Unless it's a really new wharf, they will, they'll be the same length, but most of them are very old, so there's a lot of tie lines going down from the wharf to the boats. And, Right, there's some rigging going to that fishing boat behind the dock. They always have some junk hanging down. Some another window there. I'm going to add a, a few people here on the on the dock doing some business, and then there's a fisherman on the left. They'll put some overalls on him. This is just a group of people. They're very small. You can see, you know, in relation to that doorway, they're they're a little larger because they're in front of us, but they're they're very small. But it adds a little bit of fun to the painting. I always add something when figures are walking around on the dock, just different colors. And this is a, this is a fisherman. I, this is just cat orange right out of the tube. I'm just putting some uh, fishing gear on him, a pair of overalls. Then I'll use a little gouache here to give him a, a sweatshirt. All right. So all of that just adds adds a little bit to it. All 
So I'm using that gouache to put in some tie lines uh, and a little bit of suggestion of uh, the name of the boat or some printing on the boat. And, and there's some more, uh, some more uh, equipment, radio gear, uh, radar gear, and radio equipment. And, you know, all this stuff is <laughs> on top of the boats, and it adds, it just adds so much character to it. Uh, and I'll also put in the uh, ice, Cape Pond Ice Company, a name on the on the wall that creates a lot of interest. Uh, you know, when that movie, The Perfect Storm, came out, one of the characters was wearing a sweatshirt from the Cape Pond Ice Company, and they started selling t-shirts and sweatshirts and all kinds of um, clothing, and they ended up selling more clothing than they were selling ice. It became very popular. Anyway, it is an icon, and it's still there. And it's a lot of fun to add to the background. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this painting. It's a lot of fun. You can see I popped in some seagulls up in the sky. And here's the finished painting, a couple of white seagulls on the bottom. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for joining me. I really appreciate it. I love doing that painting, and I will see you again very soon.